studio with me is Craig Martin, independent trader, analyst and um, investor, I suppose. He's written a piece on what we can learn in the investment world from the Oscar Pistorius saga and also from 9-11. I can tell you exactly what you learn. You don't mess around with guns and you don't be nasty to people. So that's simple. But what have you taken out of these two extraordinary events? Well, look, I think the point of the article is really to indicate that we develop certain beliefs and then sometimes data or evidence comes along and it changes our beliefs. And so you've seen after 9-11, many people having different views about what was reported on the day um, in terms of what actually happened. And the same with Oscar Pistorius. We developed our views perhaps on February the 14th, uh, 2013. And as the case developed, we and, and the evidence came before us. But many people hold on to those original beliefs. Which is why Tokazile Masipa, Judge Masipa, mm -hmm. threw out everything. Because he said you've been tainted by all yeah, these reports absolutely. in the media. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, it's a natural thing that we're going to anchor to our original thoughts and our beliefs and then this is what this cognitive dissonance is about we, we, we our thoughts are disrupted and it's very difficult to to let go of our preconceived notions about about matters and we do that a lot with investing we have a specific idea about a company maybe we anchor to a share price it came from in fact mm. a very good investor last week was saying how he had been averaging down on Kumba <laughs> surely it must turn around because it comes from 500 Rand yeah but that, that's a prime example of, of, of how we anchor onto things. So we fall in love with something, in other words. We, we, we become intransigent. We get a fixed idea in our head. And because of human beings' pride, we can't change it. We can't say, I was wrong, let's turn this thing around. Well, look, it's difficult because it creates this discomfort. And so it also clouds our thinking. So now we see the new data and evidence, but we rather justify our existing position because we've taken a position. And so we do silly things like average down just to prove our point so that when it turns we, we prove ourselves right but it's 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 a psychological game that we continue to need to deal with and you know in, in that article I mentioned some personal experiences okay give us a personal experience oh, well, against you by the way I want to hear one where you lost and you were stupid well, what, what, no, well look Ellie's was the one I mentioned where, mm. where I actually made a decision and said well this, this thing comes from 10 rand results are around the corner and um, surely, you know, Wayne Samson hasn't guided the market. Surely things can't be so bad. And I had some worst case scenarios and said, well, this is probably looking like value. And I brought before the results came you, Did you already have the, the share in your portfolio? No, at no I level. didn't. But I advised somebody that did have the share in their portfolio mm. that it would perhaps would not be a bad thing to average down. So I also went with my advice, but un unwind the position later that afternoon when I realized this wasn't logical. Wait for the trading statement, wait for the results and then gave the same advice to, to, to the person that I had spoken to earlier in the day. Um, but, it, but, it, but it helps think that, that it's very easy to, to get caught in emotion and not instead of just looking at the data that's there in front of you and making a decision based on the data. Which is exactly what Judge Masipa did. I mean, whether she believed in her own head yeah. that this person was guilty of something a lot more than a culpable homicide, she couldn't and she didn't make, um, make judgments based on her own personal emotions, yeah. which is exactly what you're saying about uh, how you approach the stock market. Exactly. So you've got to look at the evidence, look at the data before you at that time, irrespective of, of what happened in the past. And if you hold the portfolio or don't hold the share, in fact, you should look at your portfolio from time to time and decide, mm. would I buy this share now? And if your answer is no, then you should really be questioning, well, are you still holding it? Mm. Sounds simple, but it's yeah. something that we should remind ourselves of very often. Thanks very much for your time this evening. Brief yeah. as it was, Craig. That's Craig Martin, independent trader, analyst and investor.